Well, Isaiah chapter 18 has some more great wisdom for the latter days for us. Some things to learn. This is a different prophecy. Last chapter, of course, was for Syria. This is a, or, or, yeah, Syria. This one is different. So verse 1, it says, Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now we might say, well, what is that? What is that? That doesn't make sense. Joseph Fielding Smith commented on this, saying that it is a mistranslation. In the Catholic Bible, in fact, it reads, Ah, land of the whirring wings beyond the rivers of Cush. And in Smith and Godspeed's translation, it reads, Ah, the land of buzzing of wings, which lies beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So the, the chapter shows clearly that no woe was intended, but rather a greeting as indicated in other translations. So this isn't woe to the land, but hey, land, let me tell you something. So kind of a greeting. A correct translation would be hail to the land in the shape of wings. Now, do you know of any land in the shape of wings? Think of your map. About 25 years ago, one of the current magazines printed on the cover of the American continents in the shape of wings with the body of the bird in between. I have always regretted that I did not preserve this magazine. Does not this hemisphere take the shape of wings, the spread out of wings of a bird? This is his book, Signs of the Times, page 51. You can look the history of the church, volume 6. Uh, Orson Pratt in the Journal of Discourses, volume 16, talks about this. Spencer W. Kimball in his book, Why Call Me Lord, Lord, and Do Not the Things Which I Say. That was his enzyme talk from May of 1975 that they brought this up. So this could mean possibly more of the promised land from the Book of Mormon time frame, North America, and maybe even South America as well. That might be where this is going to. Now, verse 2, it says, so this is, hey, hello to this land. Verse 2, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. So there's a lot in verse 2 that we need to talk about here. Now, some scholars believe that verse 2 might also mean Israel being destroyed by Assyria, basically, and saved by a nation that is like a bird. Could this be like the U.S. saving Israel uh, in the last days? Maybe there's a double meaning in here. The gathering of Israel is probably what this is talking about. The rest of the chapter, if you think about this as the gathering of Israel, the rest of the chapter makes more sense. So that's probably a better way to think about this, is, is this is gathering of Israel. So this nation, a nation that it's talking about, is going to send ambassadors across the sea in vessels of bulrushes. Now, bulrushes are weeds that grow along the Nile River. If you remember, Moses was put in a basket of bulrushes when he was sent to try to be free from the, the edict of Pharaoh to kill all the children, at least the boys of that age. Uh, they are going to come in wooden boats, basically, across the sea with a message to a nation that is scattered and peeled, meaning they are raw. They are so beat up, they need lots of help. And that's where they're going to happen. So this could mean that we want to bring this up in the gathering of Israel of missionary work. Spiritually, I think that's more of what this is going to. Uh, some people say from a literal standpoint, this is Israel reaching out to Ethiopia for help in battle. Basically, and back then, maybe there's a, there was an alliance made or an opportunity with that as well. The fight against Syria, basically. Now, verse 3, All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye, when he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. So this is, verse 3 is saying, pay attention. Listen up. Okay. He lift up an ensign on the mountains and bloweth a trumpet. Ensign on the mountains is a standard. An ensign is like a banner, a standard to look forward to. And the mountains, God puts his temples in the mountains. There's some good Latter-day uh, symbolism in this one as well, which is great. 
Moroni and his trumpet on temples in the mountain, saying, prepare the way of God. Verse 4, so there's a sign being set up. Everyone should look for verse 4. For the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs, and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. So look for the sign. Be ready for this to happen, basically. Verse 5, for afore the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall cut, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. So pruning, he's going to prune this. So as it's getting ready for harvest, it's it's abundant, there's fruit, he's going to prune it back. Now pruning isn't destroying or ruining it. Pruning is making it stronger making it better. That's the goal of pruning is to help the plant become better. Sometimes the plant grows wild. We need to prune it to keep it in control so that it will grow the way we'll help it to produce better fruit and have more abundance, basically. Uh, so pruning's not bad. We have to understand that being reproved, being corrected is okay. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. But it is necessary. If I believe that what I believe is the most important thing, I will believe that you can't tell me what to do, which means you can't correct me from your perspective. We need to be corrected from other perspectives because sometimes we make bad choices. If my choice is the only choice, then there's no bad choice. There's just my choice. This is a fallacy. This is a big problem, especially with more liberal thinking. But even in conservative thinking, that whole idea of leave me alone, let me make my own choices, it's the same thing. Conservatives and liberals actually follow the same bad philosophies. They're just talked about differently, but it's actually the same bad philosophy. And that's kind of what they're talking about here is pruning is important. Being corrected by others is important. And that's where God helps us provide a perspective to go, oh, I goofed, I need to, I need to fix this, I need to be better. So verse 6, they shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth, and the fowls shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. So as we build it better, it be the plant, the tree, becomes better for everyone. The animals are protected. There's shelter. There's cover for them. For the, for the birds, shelter and protection above. For the animals, protection from below as they go underneath the branches and things. So pruning is to make it better. Verse 7, In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled. We read that, I uh, believe, that was earlier from right in verse 2. So this is, In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord. So this is like a gift. Uh, so are the people a gift to God, a people prepared for his coming, preparing for Zion? The gathered of the scattering of Israel. That's the gift, basically. Could the gift be a book of all ordinance work done for the living and the dead? There will be a gift given to God as the gathering finishes up, basically. So they'll be brought into the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto. A nation meted out and trod underfoot whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. So this is New Jerusalem we're talking about here. So the people will gather to New Jerusalem. Christ will come and they'll say, we have gathered these people. We have done this work. We have brought the members together. A uh, book of ordinance work could be a really good gift. Say, here's the people who are following you. who have been baptized, have had their ordinances done. This is the book of that remembrance opportunity, basically. So this is, Isaiah 18 is a great latter day scriptures for us, a, a thing to think about of missionary work happening, the importance of mission work to gather Israel, gather the followers of God out of the wicked nations, basically. Not physically, I mean, Israel itself will physically gather to their, their area in Jerusalem, the city, but spiritually gathering people so we know who has got their ordinance work done, who has not. And then give that gift to God. Here it is for Christ as the new Jerusalem is established and now the millennium can start, basically. So some great visualizations of what is coming. 
and what we need to be thinking about and doing to help prepare for that day. Thanks for watching. I hope you're really enjoying these videos. Like and subscribe if you are. Share them out with your friends and family. Let's jump over to the next chapter of Isaiah as we continue forward.